So today, are you recording? Yes, I think I started. Thank you. Check in. Uh, today we're going to talk about the call stack and recursion. Has anybody has anybody heard of the call stack? <laughs> so it's called the call stack. It's got the term stack in it. Does anybody remember what a stack is from yesterday's? First, it's last to go in, first to come out. FIFO. So, yeah, so first in, first out. First to go in, or no, I'm sorry, did I say first? LIFO, last in, first out. So if you think about it, it's like a stack of pancakes. You put one pancake down bottom, you stack another one on top, you stack another one on top. The first one you're gonna eat, you're gonna pull off the top. And the call stack is when it, especially <clears throat> when you execute a piece of code, it throws, when you execute a method, it puts it on a call stack. And then the next one you call, puts it on top of that until one of them is complete and then it pushes or takes it off. So I'm gonna just show you like a visual representation of that. So right here, I've got three functions. This is JavaScript. I've got this main function <clears throat> that console log, logs main starting. And then I call this second function right here. It just take this function just takes in two numbers. I console log second starting. And then within second starting, I call third, which is just a couple of console logs that says third is starting. And then when it's done, it returns. So when a function is returned, it, it, that's when it's done, it gets taken off the stack. So when a function starts, it put, gets put on the stack. And when it is returns something and finishes, finish, ex, is finished executing, it comes off the stack. <clears throat> so in this order, and a, a function won't come off the stack until uh, so in this in this case, if main starts running, it gets put on the stack, and then it calls second. So second gets put on the stack. So main is running, and now second is running, and then second calls third. So third is running. First or main and second cannot stop running until third is done executing. So once third is done, it gets removed, it returns, it remove, gets removed from the stack. And then second, console logs these two numbers added together. And then when second is returned, it gets moved off the stack. And main has been running this whole entire time. And then once second returns something, or it is returned, then main can return and then remain is removed off the stack. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna run this main.js file and kind of show you. So main is starting, second is now starting, the third is starting, so main and second and third have all started. They're on the stack together. So now third is, is the first one removed, and then within second, it just adds these two together. I can even remove this and run it again, just to make things a little more. So main is starting, it's put on the stack, second is starting, third is starting, and once third is removed from the stack, second can finish and get removed from the stack. And the last one to be removed from the stack is main. So that's kind of how it goes. And we do that because we're getting into recursion. Does anybody have any questions? What questions do you have about the call stack? Okay. So we want to cover this because recursion, you have to think about the call stack when it comes to recursion. 
So does anybody know what recursion is? Has anybody heard of the term recursion? Okay, I've heard something that calls itself remote. It's an alternative to iteration. There we go. So in any, correct, yes, it's an alternative way to iterate over something until something is met. So has anybody heard, has anybody seen the movie Inception? Who has not seen the movie Inception? Okay, yeah, one. So in Inception, um, Leonardo DiCaprio is this person who is enable, has the ability to uh, go like dream, go into dreams within dreams. So you have the real world, you have the dream world, and within the dream world, you can have another dream. You can fall asleep in your dream and then have a dream within your dream and within your dream. And Leonardo DiCaprio can't tell what a dream is versus what reality is. So he has this a little token, a spinning top that he spins in the dream. And if he knows he's dreaming, if this top never stops spinning. So in his dream, his top is, spins it infinitely. It always it continues to spin. Until he comes out to the real world, he spins a stop, and the top will ultimately slow down and fall down eventually. That's how he knows that he's in the real world and he's no longer dreaming. So that's how he knows he's done dreaming. So that's kind of uh, an example of recursion. So it's a dream within a dream within a dream. However, you don't know until you're out of the dream until something is tested or something equal. There's like a specific case that must be met. And in Inception, specifically with Leonardo DiCaprio, the case is the spinning top falls down. So, which is also called the base, a base case. So when you utilize recursion, you need a base case. So as Hal mentioned, it's a alternative to iteration. So instead of doing a for loop, you can recursively call your function until a base case is met. So let's do an example. <laughs> Did I do the function the SpaceX function, like the liftoff one. SpaceX countdown. Takes in a number, and then I can count down until it lifts off. So how do I iterate? How, do I, how would I do this without using recursion? Okay, for loop, for i, or sorry, but i equals number, i is greater than number, right, i decrement. So that's it, equals number. Oh, yep. Thank you. Um, console log number or console log i, right? And after it's done, I can console log lift off. Let's run this. Oh, shoot. Gotta invoke that function. Let's just do 10. Does that look right? 10 and lift off. Great. So this is how we would, you guys seen, you've been doing a lot of for loops, and this is one way to do this. So if I want to do it recursively, I just...
how would I do this? So, so like, let's, let's start with the base case. What's the base case of at what point it will say lift off? Zero. When num is zero, is that correct? Yes. So if num equals zero, console log lift off. I'm going to return here, sorry. Else, what? So recursion is what? Function calling itself. So you call the function itself. So I'm returning. num minus one. The initial 10 is put in here initially when invoked. The test, if num equals zero, return lift off. It does not. So it's going to move down here. It's going to return SpaceX num minus one. So then it's going to call this function again with nine. Then it's going to come in here and say test nine equals zero. No. So it's going to return SpaceX nine minus one, which is eight. So eight gets passed in here. And then just keep going. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Are we missing the council log of the number? Passing by zero? Oh, so yep. Like so, where would we council log it? Council log it there. Council log it there. Cool. Recursion? Do you, do you want it to say zero? If not, you just put it right before return. Yeah, there we go. Sorry. Let's test this. Same thing. So remember the call stack. Mm How -hmm. uh, when you invoke a function, it doesn't return until everything within that function is returned. So recursion, I'm calling countdown or SpaceX countdown. It's put on the stack. So I'm putting SpaceX countdown on the stack here, like one. I'm trying to, I'm putting it here. First time it's called. And then I'm coming down here. I'm calling SpaceX countdown again. Call, second call. And then I, I'm calling it again. So it's, the stack is getting really high. Third call. And I do it essentially till what it returns. So on the tenth time it returns, and then it like cascades down, and everyone gets popped off. So if you don't have a base case, you'll get caught into essentially. Uh, it's not really an infinite loop because within your memory, all these functions are getting put on the call stack. It's going to say like. Uh, max call stack exceeded or something like that, and you're, you're, it's going to crash. So it's crucial to have a base case. And at what point do you want the function to return, like break out of? Right. Do you, so what what's causing it to, to really break out? Because maybe I'm just not understanding how this is working. So it seems like you get to zero and you can still run through to the second function, which says minus one. What's causing that second function not to fire off? It's a return that cuts it up. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's a new statement. So it's, so it's actually returning, but it's not. It doesn't know what it's returning. So it's yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So it's returning. It's returning this, but it actually hasn't stopped. It's still run, like it's still returning, like something. It doesn't know what it's returned yet because it's it keeps going. It keeps calling itself. So like the function keeps calling itself until it actually returns a value. Okay. Okay, so that return. Okay. Understood. I understand that. Sweet. 
So it's very important to have a base case, otherwise your code won't work. Um, so it's, it's very rarely that you'll actually be utilizing recursion in the real world because of that, because of the, the call stack and right if it's keep yeah if it's like searching through something and it's continuously calling it what cases would you actually want to I mean it depends on I'm not a hard, like you can use it if it's if it makes sense if it doesn't use a, like a lot of memory, mm -hmm. as long as you're pretty explicit in your comments and your coding, making comments. But, okay. So, think about what part of the challenge, let's go through one of them. So does anybody have any questions with regards to recursion? It's actually pretty, tough concept to, to initially grasp. But you, things you have to memorize, like recursion is a function that's calling itself, so it's returning itself. Question. Yes, Al. Why and when would you use this in on the job? It seems like it takes more memory and ties up more computing resources uh, than does iterations with for, while, do while, et cetera. You're 100% correct. Um, the short time I was at my organization, I had never seen recursion used. And it's re very rare that you'll actually use it. What's the base case? So the base case, again, is at what point do you want to not essentially break out of the looping? The base break out, or essentially end the and the function. So instead of calling itself, at what point do you want to not call itself anymore? Yeah, just essentially terminate, yeah, Re to return an actual value. You could create a, you have lift out right, and then you have a flight function that would end when the uh, vessel enters the atmosphere, and then you have another point to just conceptually. So the base case for the flight function would be enters atmosphere, or vessel enters atmosphere. Yeah, you can say like, engines at full force until X amount at altitude. <laughs> right, right. And it keeps on it's like saying yes, 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 yes. Like power on, oh. keep accelerating until reach, reach, reaches maximum Q, which is X. Aerodynamic pressure, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So, so your your challenge for today, challenges. Oh, where are we at? Is that today? is to go back, where is it? Oh, recursion challenges. Is to go back and implement factorial, palindrome, 99 bottles, and Roman numerals in, recur like using recursion. He's going to be in JavaScript. Uh, does it say JavaScript? It, it, you can use it in JavaScript or yeah, it says both. I think it's in both. Do you want us to do both? If we have the time, do both. Yeah, if you have the time, do both. And then the other one is binary search. So yeah, binary search is a very common data structure like searching algorithm and from like an interview standpoint and from like a data structure standpoint. So you're gonna have to, here's the basic premise of the algorithm. You have to find a number 
in a sorted in a like a sorted array from one to a thousand, and you have to find the middle value. Hold on. Yeah. So here's like this is the actual algorithm on like how to implement binary search. So we have 550 or 537, and we have the values, which is a, an array from one to, what is it, 10,000? And it's a sorted array, so it starts from zero, or zero to 10,000. <coughs> so what you'll wanna do for binary search is you wanna essentially break apart that array into two arrays, or whatever value is at that middle index. If it's greater than the 570 or 537, so yeah, I'm gonna have that array in two. Then what if the index, the value at the index in the middle is greater than this value, you'll wanna have that array. So you have two arrays, if it's greater than if the middle index is greater than this value, the 537, you'll want to utilize the left, I'm sorry, yeah, the, the left and array, and you want to have that. And then you want to keep grabbing the middle and just like slowly like having the arrays until you find this value. So it's, I'm just gonna show you. Oh, I just did something. So you're gonna have an array one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I wanna find three. I can iterate what I'm going like one index index at one or index at zero, index at one until I find it. But what if the array is you know a hundred thousand a length of a hundred thousand? And I want to find uh, like 37,000, the, the number at 37,000. Instead of iterating it linearly by starting at one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 37,000, that takes a lot of computing power. It takes a lot of time. I can cut it in half. I can cut this array in half. So I have one, two, three, four. And you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And like the value, like here, five is greater than three, so I'm going to use this array. Now I'm going to cut this one in half. Because so I'm going to use one, two, then three, four. And it usually, it's usually you'll grab like this index. You'll grab, usually grab, what is it? You'll round down to that index. So if it's an odd number or to, if it's an even number. So is this an even number? And then Oh, whoops. So you have it, have it, and then it's usually five like that. So you have these two, and then check. Let's say we're check looking for four. So you have it. Cut it in half, and then five. And then you'll use this array. And then you'll cut this one in half, which is essentially at three. So you'll be looking at three and you'll be like, oh, three or four is greater than three. So you'll cut this one in half too, which will be three, generally be three. Oops. And then four comma five. And then you'll usually round down. You'll try to have this one in half and you'll find four. So it's a way to break, instead of finding a search, <gasps> searching for things linearly, you essentially have everything until you find the answer. <clears throat> There's a lot of resources online to search like binary search tree. 
searching for the font. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, the phone book. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, if you get, if you finish the recursive challenge of your old challenges, move on to the binary search tree. The binary tree. Okay. Who wants to be in the first? Oh yes, and today we're pair programming. I'll be work, John. So get with somebody you haven't worked with, and remote. Are you able to slack me who you're pair programming with? Thank you.